I'm gonna look at every ACL tear from the most recent NBA season to teach you the three things that I look for when identifying ACL tear injury mechanisms. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. Like most injuries, an ACL tear has a very predictable mechanism and injury pattern. We'll take a look at Dario Saric, Markel Fultz, Thomas Bryant, Spencer Dinwiddie, Jamal Murray, and Kawhi Leonard's ACL tears to teach you the three things that I look at for all of these injuries. By the end, you're gonna be able to school all of your friends and family about ACL tears. We first have to understand the anatomy and the function of the ACL to then understand how it gets torn. The ACL is the anterior cruciate ligament, and it runs from the back side of the femur down to the front side of the tibia, so the thigh bone down to the shin bone. The ACL and the PCL run in opposite directions from one another, and they both help to stabilize the knee from keeping it coming apart and also preventing some rotation. You can see the toes down here, so the ACL is running from the back of the femur to the front of the tibia, but it also runs a little bit from the outside of the knee to the inside. So when we're thinking about the biomechanics that lead to an ACL tear, we have to think of the positions that are going to pull and put stress on that ligament. The first thing we're gonna look at is the position of the trunk. What we'll see is the trunk shifted away from the injured knee. We'll start with Jamal Murray on this one. Remember it was Murray's left knee that had the ACL tear. And as he's coming down the lane here, he plants with that left leg, which we'll talk about here in a bit, but here you can see in this position, his trunk is tilted and leaning over that injured side. If we draw a little bit of a line perpendicular here, you can see how his trunk is shifted a little bit over that left knee. Next, if we look at Kawhi Leonard here, the right knee he plants, and there, same thing. We see that body leaned over that right knee. Markel Fultz coming down the lane, plants with that left leg, and as we watch here, we're gonna see his trunk fall again, over shifting over that injured side. Dario Saric, his was a little bit more subtle, but here he plants with that right knee and there's a little bit of momentum with that body again, leaning over to the side and just being a little bit out of control. And then Spencer Dinwiddie, he plants the right knee ACL was injured. And as that knee's gonna come in, you can see how his trunk continues outward to the side. So we're now in this position, his trunk again is shifted this direction over that knee. Now, quick point, I mentioned Thomas Bryant. His ACL tear was not really the typical mechanism. His was more of a knee hyperextension. So unfortunately it doesn't follow these patterns because it was a hyperextension mechanism rather than the typical kind of non-contact one that we see. So first thing I look at, position of the trunk, typically positioned over to the side over that affected limb. Now, before we move on to the second thing, it is important to know that we have exercise programs that are pretty darn effective at protecting the ACL and decreasing injury risk. And the sponsor of today's video is a company that's all about protection. If you have anyone in your life who relies on your income, you need life insurance. It really is that simple. The sponsor of today's video, Policy Genius, is going to help you get this done easy and right. I can sit and teach you about the fine details of ACL tears all day, but I know nothing about the complexities of life insurance. And that's okay, because Policy Genius is here to help you through this whole process. Getting started is simple. Head to policygenius.com slash Brian Suter MD, and they're gonna walk you through a series of questions and steps to help you identify what type of coverage you need based on your specific life circumstances. The process takes just minutes, and at the end, you can compare personalized quotes to find your best price. In fact, you could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Let Policy Genius help you take the guessing game and the stress out of getting that security of life insurance for the loved ones that you care about and help support. Eligible applicants can get covered in as little as a week thanks to an award-winning policy option that swaps the standard medical exam requirement for for a simple phone call. This exclusive policy was recently rated number one by Forbes, higher than options from Ladder, Ethos, and Bestow. So again, head over to policygenius.com slash MD to get started today and get that security for you and your loved ones. Thank you again to Policy Genius for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to our learning. So first thing was the trunk. The second thing I'm gonna look at is the leg. An ACL tear often occurs when landing on a single leg with a relatively straight leg landing very hard on a flat foot. For one, this position is going to put a lot of stress on the ACL, but also when you land with a flat foot, you have what we call a very high ground reaction force. This is the impact that's basically transferred from the ground back up through your body that has to be absorbed by your joints. If you land nice and smooth on the ball of your foot, it's very controlled, the peak forces are very low, but if you land very hard and firm on your foot, higher peak ground reaction forces, higher load through the knee. So let's look first at Dario Saric to identify that. He lands here right leg relatively straight. And again, he lands very quickly and firm 
boom, slapping down on that right foot. Short impact time, high ground reaction force, high force through the knee. Markel Fultz, again, left leg, plants here, leg is relatively straight, and then all of a sudden, boom, lands on a flat foot, straight leg. Kawhi Leonard, right knee, comes through, boom, lands, quick, sudden landing on that right foot, again, relatively straight leg. Jamal Murray, left knee, coming down the lane here, lands, boom. Again, that hard kind of heel contact, foot slapping down, striking the ground quickly, landing on a straight leg. And then Spencer Dinwiddie, right knee, again comes down, boom, lands pretty suddenly on that heel, foot flattens out, leg is relatively straight. So now we've got a shifted trunk, we're landing on a single straight leg, and we're landing with a flat foot to induce a high contact force up through the knee. Finally, we're gonna focus in on specifically the knee itself. You'll hear us talk a lot about this knee valgus. And what that term is basically describing is this combination of movements about the leg and knee where the knee tends to fall inward. If this is my tibia and this is my femur, here they are coming together for the knee joint. That knee valgus is gonna be what you see when that knee tends to bend inward like that. If we pretend this blue tube is my ACL, Whenever I bend inward with that knee valgus position, you can see how it's stretching and straining that ACL ligament. Now, as that knee is coming inward, what's happening is a couple of things. The tibia is internally rotating relative to the femur, which causes the knee to want to twist. That twisting is putting additional strain on the ACL as that tibia is wanting to come forward. Because of that knee wanting to come inward, we see the lower portion of the tibia want to sort of go outward which causes this moment that makes the knee wanna roll in even more. Biomechanically, there certainly is more complexity to it, but in general, think of that position where the knee is coming inward as causing some additional rotation in the knee joint, some additional strain on that ACL, which leads to that rupture occurring in combination with the other two things. So now going back through these, focus on that position of the knee. Here, Dario Saric lands that right leg, we can see that knee right there start to fall inward. Markel Fultz, left knee coming down, lands, keeping in mind those other two things we saw, that knee is gonna come inward. In this back view, we can see it even better. He plants and then we can see that knee pretty severely kind of fall inward to that valgus position. Kawhi Leonard coming down the court, right knee again, lands with single leg, relatively straight, flat foot. And we can see ever so slightly as he kind of comes through there, that knee has that tendency right there to shift inward. Spencer Dinwiddie lands, straight leg, relatively flat foot, knee again comes inward, kind of right here through that position of the movement as that trunk is rotated over that affected side. And we already looked here at Jamal Murray, again, right leg, plants relatively straight, flat foot, trunk shifted, knee again right there, starting to fall inward to that valgus position. Now I have to give a quick shout out here to Dr. Tim Hewitt, huge ACL injury researcher, tremendous contributions to the field for demonstrating to me kind of this mechanism to explain this. But again, imagine this blue tube is our ACL, tibia down low, femur up top, inside of the knee is here on this side. We've already talked about that combination of the knee coming inward. And as that's happening, the tibia, the outer portion of the tibia is rotating inwards relative to the femur. So when that motion happens in combination of that quick landing on a single leg, flat foot high force, you get this sudden pop that causes that ACL to tear as all of those three things come together in that moment. So in summary, the three things I look at are the position of the trunk, the positioning of the lower leg, and then the position and movement of the knee. We'll use Jamal Murray to put all that together one more time here. So as he comes down and plants, remember it's his left knee that was injured. Number one, what's the position of that leg? Plants on a flat foot, relatively straight leg on just that single leg, as that trunk is going to be shifted, typically over that affected side. We then see that knee start to come inward, which combines all those forces to put that knee in that vulnerable position to boom, kind of pop the ACL and cause that injury to occur. Now we'll certainly see other mechanisms that lead to ACL tears. For example, Thomas Bryant's hyperextension or whenever we have a contact mechanism that just puts a pure load and impact on the knee to tear the ACL. But generally speaking, whenever we see these non-contact ACL tears, we can identify these three specific patterns. Thankfully though, because we can identify those patterns that cause the injury, we have ways of implementing corrective exercises and different techniques to try to correct and offset those concerning positions to limit ACL tears. And that's actually pretty darn effective, but that's a topic for a whole nother video. So I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit deeper dive, trying to get a little bit more into the nitty gritty, but I think you all can handle it. We've talked about ACL injuries before, and I wanna give you this solid foundation so that when I talk about them going forward in the NBA season, 
you can sort of fall back on some of these concepts and maybe pick these things up and identify them when watching yourself. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below and until next time, we'll see you later.